Thank you, Jim. And with no further ado, uh, you've read, if you read the agenda, I'm just going to call up Chad and Livia. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So good afternoon. Um, I believe most of you, if not all of you, know who I am. But for those who don't, my name is Livia Newbert, and I coordinate the English as a Second Language program here at Bristol Community College. Uh, my colleague, Chad Agasinger, you want to introduce yourself? or I just did <laughs> introduce him. The Director of Tutoring and Academic Support here at BCC. We're very excited about this opportunity, so thank you, Greg, for giving us this time um, to do this, uh, because it gives our students a chance to make their voices heard and hopefully initiate some change. Um, so very briefly, I just wanted to talk to you about this project that we named Student Voices. Uh, the idea is to educate and enlighten. I love that word. Um, in an effort to reduce, prevent, and eradicate negative discourses on BCC campus, we strongly believe that it's necessary to facilitate dialogues that aim at increasing awareness and appreciation of diversity and social difference while highlighting, how, highlighting and empowering BCC students' voices. We want our students to feel a stronger sense of belonging here at BCC. And for that to happen fully, we need to be open and want to learn more about who they are as individuals and a member of BCC. The initiative encourages uh, students to productively engage in BCC efforts to foster inclusive learning environment for all students. We all need to be open to accepting the fact that the world has changed, as you all know, and is changing as we speak. Things that seemed to work 20 years ago may not work anymore today. And it's only by educating ourselves and actively listening to their stories that we can truly respond to their needs and we'll be able to find ways in which we can make their time here at BCC more enjoy enjoyable and their journey more successful. Not knowing is not an excuse anymore. So get, let's get to know them. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first um, student guest speaker, Carrie Bronquino. Hello everyone, my name is Carrie Bronquino, and I am a human services major here at BCC. I'll be graduating this spring. I am also 30, so when I came into BCC, I was an adult learner. I got sent an email about the 25 and Up Club well, a 25 and up workshop, and I took it, and it was really great and valuable, and it helped me on my journey here with BCC. Because one of my first fears was, hey, I graduated high school in 2006, and here I am in 2016. What's school like? What are the resources like? What's the homework gonna be like? Will I thrive? With that 25 and up workshop, it gave me those resources. It let me know about the library. I, I met some of the faculty and teachers here on campus, and it really helped kickstart my journey here at BCC. My first semester here at BCC, I took a class with Professor Scott Nolan, and it was my Social Working 101 class. In that class, I wrote a paper on transgender rights, acknowledgement and awareness. And if we think back two years ago, that was a really big topic. What's going on with the bathrooms? You know, should they have a bathroom for themselves? Now we have gender inclusive bathrooms here on campus, which I think is wonderful. And that piece actually won me the Student Exemplary Writing Award here. And I felt very honored. And then I started my... <laughs> and then I started my journey as a Commonwealth Honors student here with Susan McCourt. And I met those challenges with grace. And I felt, I felt very happy to take on more because I feel like if we just do what we need to do to get by, you can never really thrive. And BCC offers that opportunity here. If you open up to the teachers and the faculty, there's so much resources here on campus to help everyone. My project I'm doing for the Commonwealth Honors Program is on immigrant international students. I'm surveying them to see how BCC is meeting their needs. I'm gonna be presenting it at UMass Amherst on, at a conference on the 27th, and then here on campus as well. But with that information, I'm also gonna hold an event 
so that we can help them where their needs aren't being met. Because even though BCC has great resources and we do reach out to those students, there's always room for improvement. So since I've been here on campus, I've wanted to make myself open to students if they ever needed help. I'm also the Vice President of International Club. I was born here in America, but with all the immigrant needs and the DACA reform and all that, they need a voice. And sometimes when English isn't your first language, you're scared to use that voice. So I'm very proud to be a part of International Club. And we actually have our festival on April 24th from 9 to 1.30 in the G building if you'd like to intend. Um, that's really it, I mean, get involved. As teachers and faculty listen to your students, what are their needs? Ask them. You know, you make a syllabus about how that semester is going to go, what the expectations are, but reach out to them. Because sometimes they're scared to reach out to you. You know, they're scared that maybe they won't get the help they need. But I'm sure that more of you are all than willing to help them with whatever needs they have. Yes. So one other thing I've talked about along my journey here, and it actually got brought up in that first class I had with Professor Scott Nolan, is label jars are not people. A lot of times as you grow up, people are labeled. So I told you I'm an adult learner, I'm 30. I'm also a lesbian, I have a girlfriend, and I'm a stepmother to her kids. But beyond that, she's also a student here at BCC and sometimes struggles with childcare. So one thing I feel like BCC could do is open up a childcare program so maybe people could have daycare for their kids here so they're able to attend classes. Because we all know that if you miss so many classes, it affects your grade. So that's not something that directly affects me but I feel it could be improved here on campus. Another major issue with schools right now is the mental health. So there's a lot of gun reform out there, but is it the guns killing people or is it the people that hold those guns? So I know we have mental health services, but maybe it wouldn't hurt to have some events on campus introducing people to the counselors here so they're not scared to reach out. Or maybe the first line of defense is you all as teachers and faculty, you know, tell them about those resources because I don't want to see another person die over something like that. It's horrible, you know what I mean? Um, all right, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Carrie. So Carrie is um, in a human uh, services program here at BCC. She graduates this spring yes. and uh, yeah, we're very proud of her. Next, we would like to invite Charles McIntyre. He is a graduate from BCC in the Liberal Arts, Behavior, and Social Sciences program. So, please check, Charles. Hello, like she said, I am Charles McIntyre. Now, um, last speaker um, didn't use this sheet. Um, <laughs> He said to use that as a guideline, but the, I only was only invited to this panel like a week ago, less than that. And we autistics like everything nice and oily. We like a Q&A format when we're speaking. So I'm going to stick to um, the sheet more than the other two speakers. Just a little FYI. <clears throat> Why did I choose BCC? Well, to be honest, it was not my first choice. I actually wanted to... Um, in the seminary, I wanted to become a Catholic priest. I thought it was really something I was about to do. Changed my mind. My mom kind of pushed me to go and be in college. Um, I chose BCC because, well, my, my grades were kind of um, floundering, and I, you know, like, oh, easy college to get into, so, you know. Um, but that was my most rewarding experience in PCC. My greatest achievement as a young adult was actually April 27, I had an entire autism panel. Um, it was me, John Lake, and Tamari Bonds in this very room um, talking about what it's like to be autistic and self advocacy and um, allyship. Um, and that, that is something I'm proud to say that we're going to be doing again this time, um, April 25th, around 12, and uh, you know, a smaller room, but still, um, E, E, L101, in case you're all, all interested, I hope to see you there. Um, what challenges do I encounter? Inside, outside, um, like I said, I have I have pervasive developmental 
door. Autism, that means I have executive dysfunction, which means I have trouble getting all my little ducks in the road. Hence the she, the hence she is kind of, um, how it helps me st um, stay on task. Um, social anxiety, um, I had to summon my voice, I had to summon uh, my ability to speak, to look at all y'all. Um, um, sensory processing disorder, which means everything's loud. Like when you clap, like I can hear it twice as loud. I, I assure you, I can hear you twice as loud um, when you clap. Um, I can also hear all the construction workers, <laughs> the light. Um, it it does horrible things to my anxiety and my ability to focus. Now, wh what resources? Oh, okay, I had, the, um, I had the Learning Support Center. I had the Office of Learning Disabilities with Sue Bosno. Um, my learning specialist was Cindy Porpirzo. Um But what, what really got me through um, to graduate um, BCC was me. Was me. I was um, the one who pushed myself. I, wanted, I got myself to the Learning Support Center for tutoring. I got myself to the Office of Learning Disabilities um, Services to set up accommodations for testing, note takers, assistive technology, but being by boom. And I did the, um, I did the, all of my assignments. Um, when I failed, I picked myself back up. I, I'm the one made, who made sure I graduated. Um, What do you wish the faculty and staff administration knew about your situation? I wish you knew what it's like to have social anxiety. I mean, I know some of you do. Um, let me put it in this way. Um, social anxiety mixed with um, executive dysfunction, meaning not only do I, I'm afraid to speak to you, um, but I have trouble organizing my thoughts. So when someone comes up to you with social anxiety, social dysfunction, takes the time to listen a little bit more patiently. You know, they might have to, they might stumble over the words, they might have to over explain, they may under explain. If you, if you don't, then you say something to them, have them repeat it back to you to make sure they understand to make sure the communication is nice, neat, and tidy. And um, let's see. Number six, what could BCC change that makes studies easier? Um, for people like me, people with learning disabilities, um, I propose, I propose, um, this would be the simplest thing to do, because really you have all the pieces, you just really need to take the time to put them all in place. I would propose a committee of um, people with learning disabilities. You can have people who are deaf, blind, autistic, um, throughout the um, spectrum, people with um, different neurological dis disorders, ADHD, dyslexic, ADD, um, all sorts of different things, um, speech impairment, and then, and then they go around and they make sure everyone's listening to people with learning disabilities, make sure they are, um, their needs are being met and taken care of. Fill in the cracks, I know there are plenty of cracks, I know, I pay attention. I've been paying attention for six years. Um, make sure, you, you've heard me today, you heard someone like me today, make sure you listen tomorrow, next day, next year, and for all, as long as they're PC, make sure someone with a learning disability, um, regardless of who that is, make sure they are heard, not just by me, but the next person, the next person, and all sorts of disabilities, okay? Not just autistics, you know, everyone. Everyone must have a voice. much Charles and last but not least I would like to invite Mary Bowie to the podium she's a sophomore here at BCC in the health sciences uh, program transferring to a nursing program so um, and she's also the treasurer to the Asian Student Association here on campus so Mary hi everyone
everyone. Um, please excuse my voice. Last night I was doing karaoke, and <laughs> that's uh, traditional um, as part of my cultural background. I'm Vietnamese. Okay. Um, uh, before I um, begin this, I just hope that everyone had a nice Easter. Before I introduce myself, I would like to thank my club advisor, Rex for inviting me today at this forum and our Vice President of Academic Affairs for reserving this time for faculty, staff, administrators, as well as students like me whose voices will be heard today at this forum. Um, my name is Mary Boyd and I'm under as a health science major here at the college. I'm the treasurer of Asian Student Association Club and I'm also a tutee at the Learning Commons here at the Fall River BCC campus in B Building. I decided to go to BCC because I found it as cost effective and a great way to get your prereqs out of the way. Um, as a 2D, uh, as a treasurer of ASA and a 2D, I feel as though those are the two most awarding, rewarding aspects here at the college. Um, the volunteering experience as well as the teaching experience offers me the great chance to give back to the community and the ability to make a difference in someone's lives. Uh, when a student tells me that they're able to comprehend the materials better and say the words that almost every 2D aims for, I get it, it gives me a sense of gratification. I feel very fulfilled after the tutoring session knowing that the student was able to meet their academic needs. Uh, tutoring is a great way to develop interpersonal skills and a great way to maintain skills for future reverence and uh, as for a successful career. And for me, that's uh, important and crucially helpful because I want to become a nurse. Um, one of my main challenges coming to BCC is that I'm a first generation college student and I was very nervous and the transitional was, uh, gave me anxiety. So um, I didn't know what to do. I went to the college page to see if there was any club that I could relate to and I found the club um, ASA and I signed up for it. Um, I met up with Rex and he said, you know, come, come join the club. And um, he helped me a lot, um, guiding the path for me here as a student at BCC. Um, I couldn't be thankful enough for him. He, he's not here today, but I still want to show my gratitude for him. And yeah, that's it. Um, one advice I would tell college students here is, like Carrie said, um, be involved. Um, see what resources here at the college might help the students where, with their academic needs. And yeah, that's it. So again, our goal today was to um, have some students available to share their experience, but also to answer some of your questions. So we have three students here. Is there anything you would like to get their opinion on, perspective on, something you would like to know? I have a question for Miri. Miri, um, how did you decide on nursing as your vocation? Um, can I have your name? I'm Sue, oh, excuse me, Sue Bossano, and I oversee disability service. Oh, okay. Um, when I was, uh, I think I was 12, I wrote a uh, college essay about this, actually, for one of my um, transfer colleges. Um, when I was 12, I would occasionally um, go to the hospital to visit my grandmother because she was sick, and um, as a part of that I was, I went to her and you know, I visit her, said my greetings. I also like went out of the room and um, just 
went around the hospital, roaming around the hospital, even going to the ICU, ICU unit, and it just sparked my interest. And from there, I knew I wanted to help and become a nurse. Thank you so much. Any other questions? I've got a loud voice. <laughs> you sure? This is for all three of you. My name is Megan Abella Berlin. And we're always trying to reach out to students to hopefully get them engaged in activities that happen at the campus. But sometimes I think we fall short of knowing how best to connect with you. How would you encourage us to look at different ways to connect with the students to become involved in activities? I'll use an example of what we're doing right now. We're doing career uh, workshops and trying to help students to get more engaged in thinking about their next steps after they leave BCC. So we might do something around mock interviews, or we might do a networking workshop, or we might do um, getting connected to your online persona. How would you help us to understand how could we get more students to think about that and, and how would be interested in participating? Or is it just absolutely not in the realm? <laughs> I think maybe like in icebreaker classes when you first start off, it could be a topic of discussion. I, I can't even really tell you how I got involved in all this. Um, I know being in the human services field, I just like being involved in general. But International Club ended up coming to me through the class I took with Professor Mary Zom, and, and I needed to do civic engagement leadership. And Shiv, an international student, inspired me to join International Club. At the time, I believe he was the treasurer of the club. So a lot of things I had found, it's really word of mouth that it's not always necessarily students, the teachers, but it's the students sometimes, and us inspiring each other. So maybe support the students in your class to reach out and connect with each other. Maybe the way you structure some of the activities in class, like when students work in groups or one-on-one, -on -one, stuff like that comes up as a topic of discussion and, and they drive themselves there, you maybe just gave them the vehicle to get there in. Um, you could um, be be more inclusive, perhaps, um, if people have um, different needs. Um, make sure make sure there is a um, signer for for um, people who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, maybe people people with social anxiety. Are, will always struggle to show to events. They will always show to events. Um, there is such a thing as coming on too strong. Um, flyers are a bit more um, anonymous and less intimidating. So flyers don't don't uh, walk up into us like, hey, why don't you come to an event? No, we'll run away. We'll run away. You know. Um, um, Maybe maybe have it some low key events, but you're talking about the job um, training workshop. Like I want I want um, on a side note, I want um, you invite um, job recruiters from more who support businesses or represent businesses that are um, hiring more inclusively. Um, you know, di people with, people with. Um, Different ability, differently able people, people with autism and other disabilities may not be able to do a job interview the way a regular person would, um, a holistic person would, um, or they might need some accommodation. So if you can invite more of those people, you know, seek them out. There, there are those people there, and just um, invite them. Make sure you know more inclusive people. Um, are in, in um, job job um, workshops that would um, help in great strides. I think you answered my. Yeah, I think um, Carrie and this gentleman here answered all the questions. Charles. So, Charles, thank you. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi. Um, I one of the things that I do here is I teach college success seminar in the first uh, in a lot of people's first semester. I teach it fall semester. So I'm just curious, and maybe you've had a chance to answer this before, but um, just out of curiosity, thinking back to your first semester here, what do you? What's something that you wish you had known coming in that it it took you longer than your first semester to learn or to know? 
just to, as I'm trying to sort of get in the kind of get in the mindset of a first semester student here. I mean, I didn't really get to take that class because with the 25 and up, it waived it. Okay. But maybe just more the resources. Maybe I don't know exactly what happens in class, but but going places, being introduced to more people. Because one thing I found really great about BCC is you're all networked so well. Like if you talk to one person, they can usually point you in the right direction. But sometimes seeing it and being in it helps more. Like I didn't exactly know what the site lab did until I'm doing my honors project with Carolyn Kenny and she told me, oh, they help with the surveys and this and that. I was like, oh, cool, that's what the site lab's for. Like there's just so many resources here and you don't really get to know them all until you get involved with them. Okay. I wish I knew it was going to be okay. I wish I knew, um, see, the, I'm 26. Um, the Charles you, you see today, um, 26 year old Charles, um, was not the 19-year-old Charles when I first started the school. Um, I, the Charles I, yeah, I have right now, 19 years old, way worse. Um, I was coming from high school, senior year, horrible year for me, feeling all sorts of self-esteem issues. Um, so really, really, um, maybe we could have some mentor programs. That'd be nice. Um, but um, I didn't take the seminar. And maybe if I had, maybe I would have understand like where everything is. You know, G building is a multi purpose building. So like um, you know, you know, you know the Roman Center, those and um, the um, counseling center um, with um, I forget the people there. Um, and the job the job training center, you know. No, knowing where everything is, um, not just where all the buildings are, but like all the departments are, that would have helped 19-year-old Chuck a lot, you know. There's always a, a little look back, like, oh, what could I tell myself, little me? But, you know, I got through it. Thank you. Um, coming here, I didn't know there was a lot of uh, resources on the campus. Um, back in high school, I was always told that when you go to college, you know, you're not going to be spoon fed. You have to do everything by yourself. You have to know everything before you get to college. Yeah, so um, BCC has some nice, uh, they have uh, financial workshops, resume workshops, and I didn't know there was um, uh, the tutoring at uh, BCC until I got an email from Chad saying, oh, we're hiring. And so I applied for the job and yeah, that's it. We have time for maybe one more question. Anything? I might be able to speak so you don't have to uh. run. So my question, I'm Deb Cohen, I'm the Dean for Academic Advising. And it's somewhat of a follow-up question to what Megan had asked you earlier. And Eric and I were just talking. As the for academic advising, one of the challenges we have within our department is what's the best means by which to get your attention and be able to disseminate information to you so that you'll actually hear when the drop, add drop deadline is, when the last day to register for classes is, when finals begin. All of that information sometimes we send out to you in last emails, but I feel like at this point in time, it, sometimes it's, it's, it's not received as, as well or as much as we as administrators would like it to be received. So I guess my question for you is, what's the best means for us to communicate with you where we know you will actually hear the information so that you can put it to use for your own best interest? So I'm the opposite of Charles. I say the more ways the better. Um, one valid thing I was told is that to forward my BCC email to my personal email. Had I not done that, I'd probably miss a bunch of emails. But beyond that, maybe the teachers could announce it. Some of them have when I've been in class, just so you know, the ad drop period's coming up. Um, I do look at the screens as I walk around campus. So I would say the more exposure, the better. Because everybody, everything works different for different people. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I want to say something on the emails. Like, I I didn't like um, having to log in, use log in, have my password, my username, 
and have to do that twice because when you have executive dysfunction, it's hard to remember things like passwords and um, it just it's just a slight it's a, it's a first world problem, right? But it's like you know a little bit more convenient. You just have it in my regular email, um, you know, but. Um, it's true that word of mouth is actually the fastest form of um, spreading words around. Um, so, you know, if, if you want to make sure certain departments know um, about, what were, were you asking about uh, specifically, registration? Yeah, registration or anything else. Like, you tell Sue Bosno or um, <laughs> he, um, Pat Weis, Weisberger um, or different departments where you know these students are going to be going, uh, you know, that um, they can um, drop it and, you know, everyday conversations like, oh, just so you know, this is happening, we have this. And, you know, like, you have your, um, you have your little billboards and jeep building registered today, you know, flyers on the, on the um, bulletin boards. That, that would about do it, yeah. Yeah, um, I wouldn't want you to, like, penalize the students for not staying up to date with um, all the emails, but um, I think a great way to um, tell the students is uh, emailing the teachers, emailing staffs, and you know, letting them know that the students need to be up to date because um, I'm pretty sure everyone comes to classes, and if it's not uh, hybrid and online, the teachers could send an email to the student and they can stop, stay up to date that way. Thank you. How about a round of applause for our panelists today? So hopefully something they shared today will resonate with you and it can help you um, in whatever role you play here at the college. Livy and I are hopefully planning three more of these. They are funded by the Strategic Planning Committee. So as part of that, they want us to do an assessment. So if you wouldn't mind putting your name on here, we're going to send you a very brief survey. We will not share this information so you, we know who's here, but it's just for our survey. And if you choose to come to our future ones, which we'll announce in BCC Weekly, there will be food. So we we are planning one for Thursday, April 19th at 1 p.m. before the all or the professional staff meeting at 2. Um, and on the survey we're going to send you, we are going to ask you if there's any students that you think um, should be included in a future presentation. We have not identified all the students, so if there's a student who you think really is a standout and has an interesting story that other people should hear about, please send them our way. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much.